Hello and welcome back. This is part two of the ball turning in attachment, but it's not actually part two of the ball turning attachment, it's actually part two of the acorn making attachment. Yes. That I'm afraid that's the best I can do. <laughs> uh, I think it might be a tool steel issue, so I'm gonna replace it with an indexable six millimeter bit. But until then, enjoy the video. There may be a number three or it may end up in the bin. More likely, the latter. Hello and welcome back. It's part two of the ball turning device. I'm going to do a little bit of drilling. We need to drill all the way through both pieces so it'll form a, a parallel axis. Well, hopefully, that's the plan. So I'm going to start off with a smaller bit and work my way up to a longer bit. Everything's clamped and squared and ready to go. All the way through. And hopefully, when I put both pins in, they'll be on the same axis. The story so far, that's drilled out with two 7mm holes, and that's drilled out with a 9mm hole. So that's that. Being a cheapskate, I was going to use this old bolt for it to form the top piece for the steering attachment. I got that off a car boot sale for a pound, it's okay isn't it? But, while I was there last week, I found this. Yeah, I like using these, I use these on my tapping machines. So, I think that will be cut down and that will form the steering control. So I just need to machine that to 9mm and then step it down to 7mm. So, I'll get on with that. It has to be pretty accurate though, for it all to work. Good luck with that one Chris. I'm just going to cut the bar down. I knew this thing would come in handy eventually. <laughs> I've now mounted the brick piece into the Colchester lathe and I've started cleaning it up. The original diameter was 12 millimeters and these reducing to 9 millimeters so I'll get on with that in earnest. I'll just show you one pass and then I'll turn the camera off, get on with the job, it has to be quite accurate, then I'll show you the finished product.
final pass. And nice. Yeah, so lovely fit that. I'm happy with that. That's the top one done. Right, I'll get on with the bottom one off camera and I'll show you the finished job. Well then, it's the moment of truth. I'm going to put the pins in now, so it's do or die. That's that one. Well, that's quite snug. Now for the other side. Same again. It may not be the best choice of a Well, whew. there you go. That's definitely snug. Well, yeah, there's potential there. It's not going to be too bad, that. Right. Next. Whoa, that was hard work. Wait, I need to pinch that now. So you pinch that. And that will now go on there. Oh yes, everything's fine. A lovely fit that. I couldn't get a better fit if I tried. And the advantage of that is when I finish with a tool, I can take the end away and it's easy to store. It doesn't take up much room. Right. Let's have a closer look. Jobs to do yet are clean these bits of shaft off, top and bottom. And I then need to put a pin. I'm going to use one of these rivets because these are hardened steel pins. I'm going to pin through there, drill a hole and pin through there. And that will then locate the whole thing together. So when I turn that, this should turn as well. So that's easy enough. I'll get on with that and then we'll have a go of it on the lathe. So there you go. I think they're about 1.5 millimetres and so that's fine. Okay, let's get on with it. Back at the drill mill and I've started drilling for the pin in earnest. I was going to use a 1.5 millimetre rivet, but I've now decided, after finding this bit of old welding rod on the floor, which is two millimetres, this will be a better job. It may be more robust. I'm three quarters of the way through. Say that's enough. Let's try the pin. Yes. So I'll lock tight that in and cut it off, and we're ready then for go on the lathe. Ah. Yes. I'm just making a mandrel to carry the workpiece. It's an M10, but I've not dragged you over here to see that. I dragged you over because I've set up the boring bar quick change. I'm just going to give this a go now. Well, just see how we get along for fitting. The original concept of when they're flat on the top is when I tighten up these Allen screw bolts here, it should pull the whole thing square. Well, hopefully. Why has it been a waste of lucky time? It seems to have done so. So, I'll have to check at the dial indicator, but hopefully it is square, or it'll be upsetting. Right. 
Right. So that's okay, isn't it? We're nearly there. That's nearly a ball turning uh, attachment, he says. Okay, uh, I'll make a little bit of brass now for the end of that. Ready to turn a ball, a brass ball for the first go. Uh, but I'll do that tomorrow because it's time for me tea and I think I'm having a spag ball, so I'm off. So see you tomorrow. Hey. Ball turning attachment, test two. I've added a pocket there, as you can see, so that part doesn't catch the shaft. And I've also added a pocket there so I can have a longer tool steel. On the first attempt, I got a lot of chatter, as you can see, on the rear of the sphere. The whole unit was bouncing. I don't know if it was the mandrel wasn't thick enough or this is just no good. <laughs> Probably no good. So I'll give it another go. I've also the cut on the tool steel as well. It's got more of a radius on it. All I can do is give it a go. So let's get on with it. Cutting better that way towards the chuck. Oh dear. It's going to take a bit of practice, I think. End of test two. Alright, I wonder if they've gone wrong there.
so far. It, oh, actually, it's not a ball turning attachment. It's actually a decorative acorn making attachment. I might have invented a new thing here. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god, the things I do for you two. So if anybody wants to buy a decorative acorn, the more the more come.